All right, so this is example three from class, and this deals with a concept you may have learned in chemistry called half-life. Now, you need to know that half-life is the amount of time it takes for a radioactive isotope to decay to half the amount in any sample. So it's a length of time. Now, any time we talk about half-life, it is a continuous thing. It's happening second by second. So we're gonna use the formula for continuous growth and decay, which is this one. write out all the variables and the first part of the problem asks you to find the value of k which is the relative growth rate also called the k constant in order to do that we're going to have to use the definition of half-life so the definition of half-life is how long and the length of time we're given is 1.25 billion years now if I look further down in the problem I've got like 300 million years so I'm going to write 1.25 billion as 1250 million you could stay with the 1.25 billion if you wanted to, you just have to convert the 300 million later to billions of years. Now, that is the amount of time that it takes for an initial sample to decay to half its size. We weren't given, though, the size of the initial sample. So what I'm gonna say is, my initial sample is some number n, we don't know what that is, but my final amount is gonna be one half of that. So now I'm gonna insert everything into the formula and I'm gonna to work to solve for k. So remember, we have to undo this multiplication first. We're gonna divide both sides by n. So take the natural log of both sides. And again, this should look familiar from previous examples. Gonna kick the baby. natural log of e is 1, so it goes away. And so k would be this number. So I'm going to take my calculator and I can calculate that. And it gives me a really tiny negative number. It's like k equals negative 5.545 dot 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 times 10 to the negative fourth. Now, that number should be negative because it's decaying, and I don't want to keep up with all those decimals, so I'm going to store that in my calculator as k. But that would be the answer to my first part, part A. Part B says we have a specimen that contains 36 milligrams of this isotope. How long will it take to decay to only 50, 15 milligrams? So it's the same isotope, so it's going to have the same relative growth rate, the same k. So I'm going to use the same formula. I'm going to write y, n, k, and t. And remember, e is the number e. The k is the k I just calculated. And this time I'm given an initial amount. It's 36 milligrams. And I want to know how long it's going to take to decay down to 15 milligrams. So I plug everything in. And you really start to see when you're doing these exponential equations that there's a real pattern in the way you solve every time. I'm going to divide by 36. If I wanted to get 15 divided by 36 and store it here, I could, but I'm going to take the ln of both sides. I'm going to kick the baby. The ln of e is 1. I'm going to divide both sides by k. Oops. And then I'm going to use my calculator to find that number. And I get 1578.79. But remember at the very beginning, I changed one, like one, uh, 1.25 billion into 1250 million. So what I've got here is this many million years. Now, for part C. How many milligrams will be left after 300 million years? So this time, same formula. It's the same isotope, so we're, we're going to be using the same K. We would be starting now on this one. I'm assuming they want us to start with the 36 as the initial that they gave us in the last one. And they want to know how many will be left after 300 million years. So this is literally a plug and chug. There's no actual algebra to do here. You pop this into your calculator 
and it spits out the answers.